FTB Film Study is sponsored by the 409 Tailgate Club. For the best tailgate sauces, barbecue dry rubs, and Bloody Mary mix, visit 409tailgateclub.com today. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another For the Bloggy Breakdown, Penn State football. Today, we're going to talk about Ball State versus Penn State. We're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about how well scripted the first two drives were for Penn State, how Juricic was playing chess, not checkers, and how he got the ball to his athletes in space as quickly as possible with efficiency to let everyone get in a rhythm. Loved it. Can't wait. Remember, hit like, subscribe, and notifications. Let's do this thing. So first things first, first play from scrimmage, you're going to get into a tight end wing set. And I really want to show you how this works. You have a tight end here. You have a wing here. You have a twin receiver look up top. He sends a guy in motion to determine if it's man or zone. Now he does this because he knows that this kid's going to walk down, but when he goes away, this corner is going to walk back. The objective here is to get this kid to roll back and get himself out of the flat immediately. So when the quarterback snaps the ball, you're going to get a basic boot concept. You're just a wide zone guy. And so he's going to try to run wide zone with the tailback quarterback from under center. He's going to open up. He's going to fake to the tailback and he's going to roll out and boot to the side over here. Now, how it happens is the motion guy becomes the flat presence. The receiver up top at the top of the twins becomes the crosser and the corner route or the clear out route is run by the tight end at the bottom of the screen. The wing is going to knock the whole thing down until he can release late. If the boot is covered, then this kid right here ends up becoming the late hitch up. And I'll show you later. So here we go. You're going to get a nice, quick boot action. Okay, you see how the wing is driving himself down. Notice that the motion guy is now becoming the flat. The quarterback's going to open himself up. He sees that that corner drop deep because he's got to take care of that corner route. It's a simple high-low read for the quarterback. Quarterback is just reading the high-low of this corner right here. If the corner bails, he hits the flat. If he sits down, he hits the corner. Quarterback's a nice, easy dump to one of the best playmakers in the Big Ten. And there you go. You get a nice, easy eight-yard gain. Okay, so now looking at the, the exact next play and hurry up. As you can tell, the defense barely had themselves an opportunity to get lined up. They're still giving you the roster and the starting lineups. And now you're going to get yourself into a trips to the boundary look. All right, and you're going to get one receiver up top. All he's doing here is he's reading quick box count. This is a one word call. Okay. So he's going to run a hitch to the single side receiver and he's going to run a little quick smoke screen down here to the outside receiver. All he's doing is he's counting the box right now. There's only four guys in the box and he's got five blockers. So right up, he's going to hand this ball off on just an old school inside zone and he's going to get a first down of five yards. This doesn't seem like much, but what it's doing is it's putting a stress on these linebackers. These guys have to make a decision. Either they're going to play this and this, or they're going to jump in and play run right now. By playing that far out, there's no way they can play run. Okay, so the next play, you're going to have trips to the field this time. So this is, again, going back to what we talked about before. He's doing a good job of putting Clifford in a very good, very good situation where he can have success. If you look at the top of the screen, all he's going to do is the single side receivers, he's going to run a corner out, and he's going to run a quick flat by the running back. All he's doing is he's making a one high-low read on this corner right here. I want you to see what happens. Watch how the corner bails at the snap and watch how the running back can get to the flat immediately. This is an easy read for the quarterback. It's an easy throw. It gets him in rhythm. You can do this in a hurry because it's only one person read. He puts it in the flat. Again, you've got a playmaker. Give him the ball in space. Another first down. Okay, so now going back to it, going down a couple plays later, now you're going to get a good situation. If you take a look at what I did before, it's the same formation, except now the receiver, instead of going in motion back and forth, he's at the top of the screen. You have a tight end wing down here. Now they're thinking about all the different things he can do out of this. He just runs old school duo. And duo is just basically, it's just solo blocks across the board. You're solo blocking, you're solo blocking. Now it's a double team to here. It's a double team to here. It's a down block here. And we're going to get that guy. Okay. And you can see how this whole thing works. And all this guy right here is doing is he's lead blocking. The running back is reading the middle linebacker. So he's reading this kid right here. If this kid fits the gap, the running back bounces it. If this kid flies over the top and the defensive end squeezes, then he just puts his foot in the ground and gets vertical. He sees that, that linebacker fit the gap. He bounces it, and you've got yourself a successful play. This is old school duo. The NFL runs as a bunch. Okay, so now a couple plays later. Now, again, look what you got. You have twins down here. You have tight end wing up top. This was a really big, really big formation for them early in the game. Now, watch what he does. He sends the guy in motion. This should look oddly familiar. It's easy. Quarterback's just going to ride this thing open. He's going to hit it, all right, and it's going to be a nice play action. Now, I think Clifford struggled a little bit on this one because I know what he wanted to hit. 
He was looking to hit the crosser by the tight end up top. Okay, he was looking to hit this crosser right here. I think he pulled the trigger a little late. He probably should hit this window. Again, the running back coming out of the backfield usually never gets the ball, but he's wide open anyways. But what this does do is it lets Clifford make one read and get use his legs as his strength, okay, and which gets him a nice third down in one situation. Okay, later in the drive, notice that they couldn't even get the film rolling fast enough because it was hurry up. He has quads to the field, which means four receivers up top, one receiver at the bottom. All he's doing is he's throwing a quick screen up here because he knows for a fact that they're not going to put the numbers over there as fast as they possibly can. Again, find your best athlete and get him the ball in space. You only have three guys playing this, and you have one guy coming really late, which means you're going to have an open receiver, and you're going to get him the ball as fast as you can, and now you're going to get yourself a nice, good situation to the first down. So this is a well-scripted drive. Okay, so you started with trips to the boundary. Okay, he motions over. Notice now you get a double motion now. Again, it's the same thing. Now it's the old school triple option. You're going to get the motion across. This is all smoke and mirrors. Now you're going to get the tight end into the flat. And we talked about the tight end B-back or cowboy back usage that he had at Oklahoma State. You're starting to see it now at Penn State. Take a look what happens. He's going to ride it. The first read is going to be the ML line scrimmage. He's reading this kid first for the pull read. Okay. That kid comes crashing down. He pulls the ball. Now he runs. Now he's reading the outside linebacker. Okay, now his theory is the outside linebacker crashes down, so his next player is the safety alley fitter. So he just dumps that thing off to, this, to the tight end right there. You get a nice five-yard gain. It just it's, it happens in such a rapid pace that's really hard for defenses to be able to adjust to this. Okay, the next play. Here we go. This is it. Split back, wing back. You have three running backs in the backfield, basically, and we're just going to run wide zone to finish this drive off. They just get an amazing push up front. All right, you get an amazing push up front. We seal this edge. Running back never has to change his path. He goes into the end zone. He's not even touched. This is just a thing of beauty. I really appreciate how hard they set this up and what they did to make this a better play. I thought the front side left tackle and left guard did a great job. Okay, let's watch the second series. You can tell this was scripted as well. If you go back and look, this is the same thing we saw previously. Tight end wing, twins of the field. You're going to get motion from the receiver, and you're going to hand it this time. Notice they don't even bother blocking the four-eye or this guy right here because they know he's a squeeze player. They're just going to hand the ball off on the edge, and they're going to go ahead and get some positive yards. Again, it's a way to get your best athlete the ball in space as fast as you possibly can. Okay, third down. Now you're starting to see something. He runs trips bunch to the field. He sends his best athlete in motion. They don't adjust. And that's the key. Right now he sees this. Now this guy becomes a slot receiver. Just quick dump, throw it to him. Let's go get a first down. Again, it's not complicated stuff, but it's real simple. He notices that emotion. They don't adjust. So he knows that after that no adjustment site, he has numbers to the boundary right there. And that's all he's looking for. All right. Going back to boundary now. This is interesting. This is the boundary. We're going trips to the boundary, single side receiver to the field. This is a play action. And all he's going to do is he's going to run his little slot receiver up the field because he knows these linebackers are going to fit hard. Watch how he rides it. You can tell it's not an RPO. By the way, the O-line's blocking. Notice how they get downhill, but then they set up because they're not trying to run block. And he's just going to get this kid pinched over the middle. He's going to now get his receiver the ball as fast as he possibly can. Okay, Parker Washington is an athlete in space. Here we go, two by two. This is old school stuff. This is the old school Oklahoma State stuff right here. All he's doing is he's just looking at the apex. Okay, you're going to get a crawfish. You're going to get a crawfish by this kid and you get a crawfish from this kid, meaning they're just going to run out. You're going to get a block. You're going to get a block. He's going to determine which, which one does he like the most? Does he like that angle or does he like this angle? He determines that this guy right here can't make this play. So he's going to take it. He's going to get off the ball and he's just going to throw this thing out as fast as he can. And we're going to get the ball to a playmaker in space. It's an easy 10 yards. We move on. Now we're starting to get toward the end of the drive. This is a phenomenal play call. What this is, is, is remember, if you take a look previously out of the same exact stuff, you saw wide zone. Now he's going to give us the old school wide zone backfield look. He's going to run a post with number one. He's going to run a wheel with the back out of the backfield. And he's going to run a flat with the other running back. All this does is put these guys into a flood. All right. So this kid's going to have to take this over the top. All he's doing is reading this corner. The corner bails and runs with the post. He throws the wheel. Great throw even better catch in traffic. And now we get the ball down the goal line. Now, again, take a look at the film. The film shows you straight up. 
There's not enough guys to cover the trips to the field here. There's not enough guys. And if you take a look at it, this is actually an unbalanced formation. Most people would never notice that. The receiver is, there's actually a tight end right here. You have one, two, three. So this guy right here is actually an eligible receiver. But again, in a hurry up, it's hard to determine that. All he's doing is he's looking for numbers. He sees three for two, catch that ball, flip it, throw it, get up the field. Let's go do our thing. Let's score. Let's get in the end zone. Now, how does he finish in the end zone? He runs a quarterback sneak on in a hurry up as fast as he possibly can. And they sat back and score. Guys, Yursich came to play this game. I really enjoyed his first two drives. I thought he scripted everything well. He did a great job with the formations, the unbalanced motions. He did an even better job of setting one play up to another. I feel like Yursich is starting to see the pieces. He's playing chess right now when a lot of offensive coordinators are playing checkers.